Everybody uh, turn to John 15. As I get things set up here. Hope everybody had a great week. And so for the last uh, several weeks, we had been talking about purpose and how we find our purpose and some clues along the way. Uh, because you can't be fulfilled until you're in, in until you cannot be fulfilled until you fulfill your purpose. You can have success and you can accomplish things, but you'll never be fulfilled until you are in your purpose. And so we went over that. Now we're talking about being fruitful, and so we've hit that uh, in the last few days. And in John 15:8, matter of fact, even going back to Genesis, the first thing that man heard when God was uh, when God spoke to him was to be fruitful. That's the first thing he heard. And we know that uh, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, that he changes not, and so that we're still supposed to be fruitful. And in John 15, 8, it says, Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. So once again, we're not only just to bear fruit, but much fruit. And so we've been talking about that, and so let's get a little further and deeper into that today. Um, just for a second, let's go ahead and uh, see where we've been. The first thing we talked about was that uh, God's commandment is to be fruitful. So we know that. It's to be fruitful. He commanded it. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't a suggestion. It wasn't, you know, a multiple choice. What do you want to do? Snooze. Be fruitful, compromise, just get by. I mean, it wasn't a multiple choice question. He said, be fruitful. Be fruitful. It wasn't a suggestion. It was a command. And number two, we went through, uh, you can't be fruitful until you're seedful. <laughs> Glory be to God. You can't be fruitful until you're seedful. And number three says you can't be seedful until you get to your core. And we took some time on that one, which is introspection. Amen. Getting to the core of who you are, which went right along with finding your purpose. I mean, they just matched great. Introspection. Who are you? What makes you tick? What drives you? What disturbs you? What do you disturb? Amen. Because what you hate Amen? What you hate, you're called to correct. What you love, you're called to build. What you have compassion about, uh, let me think, what you have compassion about, you're called to heal. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Introspection. Who are you? You got to do you. Amen. That's the only way you're ever going to fulfill your purpose is by doing you. And number four, which, which is where we've been for a while, is you can't get to your core until you're first peeled. So let's go through those again. Number one, God's command is to be fruitful. Number two, you can't be fruitful until you're seedful. Number three, you can't be seedful until you get to your core. And number four, you can't get to your core until you're first peeled. And... We went over that God will peel away what he can't plant. He's going to peel away what he can't plant. There's only one part of you that's fruitful. And that's the only part he wants, the part that's got life in it. And so he's going to peel away things in your life. He's going to peel away that little boy in you, that, that little girl in you, the insecurities in you, the self-centeredness in you, the bitterness, the unforgiveness in you. He's going to peel it all away. He's going to get to something that has life in it. He wants to get to the core. Amen. And so that's all he wants. And so what we're going to talk about this morning, uh, we're going to get into stuff, some stuff that may be a little, depending on what camp you come in, I'm hoping it's not too controversial, but we're going to have scripture for it, amen? So just ask you to weigh it out in your hearts and let the Holy Spirit talk to you about it because we're talking about being peeled. Let's head over to the book of Hebrews. Book of Hebrews, chapter 12. Glory be to God. Being peeled by the Father. Hebrews 
Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to start reading at verse 5. And I believe I'm going to take it all the way down through verse 11. Being peeled. Because he's going to peel away what he can't plant. He just wants what's got life in it. He wants to get down to your core. What can multiply? Be fruitful and multiply. He's looking for that multiplication. And you only have multiplication in the seed. So starting with verse 5, it says, And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Are we in New Testament? Is this the word of God? Because sometimes we think because he is love and he is full of grace, but he's full of truth. And he's still your father and he is not an absentee father. That's right. That's right. I wish I could get an amen from somebody. Somebody help me out this morning. He's not an absentee father and he is still a king that is on the throne and you are accountable to your king. Yeah. Don't get over here. Don't get over in air and think, well, why is he going to smack you around, put sickness on you and stuff like that? What good father going to do that to anybody? Your father ain't going to do that to you, but to train you up for you to grow, you got to be disciplined. Because if you're at, perf let, me, let me just say it like this, if you're at perfection, you don't need correction. Yes. Can I have a show of hands, anybody who's totally arrived and has got it all figured out? Anybody, anybody, anyone, anyone, <laughs> going once, going twice. That's what I thought. So if you're not at perfection, you need correction. Yes. Correct. But you need correction with affection. But if you still, you still need correction. And it says, uh, don't despise. In other words, that word despise doesn't mean necessarily hate like, we, like in our modern vernacular. Despise means that to, to esteem it low, to low esteem it. In other words, you don't give much weight to it. In other words, if you walk across the street and you see a penny laying on the on the, on the street and you just walk on by, why didn't you pick it up? Well, you despised it. You just it didn't have much weight to you. You didn't think highly of it. You didn't uh, give a lot of, uh, 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 of, of, a lot of um, value. Thank you, a lot of value to it. <laughs> you just walked right on by it. So yeah. don't lightly value the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when you are rebuked of him. Oh, you mean the Lord going to rebuke you? Yeah, he is. In verse 6, it says, For whom the Lord loveth. Listen now. For whom the Lord loveth. Or who he loves, he chastises and scourges every son whom he receives. He loves you too much to leave you like you are. Matter of fact, we, we looked over in John uh, chapter 15 where we were uh, a, a little bit ago. If you, if you read a little closer to the front of that one. You're going to get pruned if you ain't bearing fruit, and you're going to get pruned if you do bear fruit. So you're pruned if you do, and you're pruned if you don't. <laughs> because he's going to get some fruit, and that's the way that you get fruit. you got to prune it back. Glory be to God. And so don't despise it. Because if he loves you, he's going to prune. He's going to cut on you if he loves you. Because he's trying to get down to the core. He's trying to get down to that thing that has life in it. Because that's the only part he wants. He wants you to be fruitful and, be, and, and to multiply. And that's what gives him glory. Is when you bear much fruit. And so don't despise it. If he loves you, he's going to correct you. Who in the world going to let their... Children raised up and just be all jacked up all the time and never. I, you, you doubt it. You, if you see that, you kind of doubt if there's any love in the home. <clears throat> I can understand having, you know, maybe a difficult situation. Maybe you wasn't raised right and all that kind of stuff. And you can, you know, you do best you can with what you got. You, you don't know, you don't know. But since children run buck wild, just like crazy, that ain't love letting that go on. You ain't taking care of, you ain't raising that child. He said, train a child up in the way they should go. It doesn't say anything about be their best friend. You, you got to train that child up in the way they should go. Because if you don't, the state will. Hello? If you don't, the state will. The hood. 
<laughs> so, glory be to God. Verse 7 says, if you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? And verse 8, but if we without chastisement whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. No, this is an indication of you are his child. He is going to deal with you because you're his, and he is not an absentee dad. Verse 9, Furthermore, we have had fathers in our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Well, shall we not much more rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, for our what? For our what? For our profit. It's all for our good. Look, God is not insecure and he's not on an ego trip. He don't want you to behave because he just needs somebody to lord over because when he does that, when he puts you down, he elevates himself up. Look, he's already up. He's up as high as he's ever going to be. Glory be to God. You can't get no higher than that. He's the most high God. He's very secure in who he is. And so when he does that, it's for our good. It's not because he's on tripping on somebody, because he's got low self-esteem. It helps his ego. No. He's trying to help us. And he's trying to train us up. He's trying to get us to bear much fruit for our, prof for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. A whole other topic for a whole other day. But that's good. He expects us to be holy. Amen? Be holy as he is holy, the scripture says. Now, no chastising for the present seemeth to be joyous. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I can remember when I got it growing up. Praise God. I, I, got the, I got the belt. Yeah, I did. I sure did. I'm glad I did, too. And it was not joyous. I can't say I look forward to it. I can't think I was skipping down the hall like, ooh, right. Yeah, I'm going to get whooped today. <laughs> woo -hoo. No, it was not joyous, but it was grievous, it says. Grievous. I don't like it. <laughs> Nevertheless, afterward, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. That's one thing Brother Bobby's still working on. I can't say I like correction. <laughs> Who does? But what I've learned about wisdom, and it says this in Proverbs many times, that a foolish person is somebody who will never receive correction or instruction. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how arrogant. You got it all figured out. Hate it. Like you never made any mistakes or anything. I'm right. A wise person is going to receive, and they're going to, they're going to welcome it. That's what it says. When you get corrected, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, okay. Because who wants to keep doing it wrong? I don't want to keep doing it wrong. Like I said, if you're not a perfection, you need correction. But here's the key. You need correction with affection, not just anybody coming along the hip yippity skippity down the trail wanting to go ahead and correct you on something. It needs to be somebody that you know loves you. Somebody that speaks into your life that you know that really cares about where you're going to be. Uh, for instance, the calling that God has put on our lives, uh, especially with the ministry he gives me, is I'm not speaking to where you were. I, God has called me to speak to where you're going to be. <laughs> Praise God. I want to speak to the future you, yeah. the fruitful you. Yeah. you. You flowing in your knowing. You got your place with your grace, your function with your unction, Amen. your purpose. I want to speak to the core of you, the real you, who, wants, who needs to go and do what God has called you to do. Amen. 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 And so a lot of times even I like the, you know, the spiritual daddies that I have in my life, I've got you know, four spiritual daddies. I've got 
two doctrinal daddies and I got two directional daddies. And a lot of times when they speak into my life, I'll hear something and I'll realize, oh, well, I never saw that before. When I teach that again, I got to teach it this way. Because you, you, you only, you only uh, can walk in the light you have. And if you don't have the light on it, you really can't teach that part you don't know. You, you can't teach what you don't know. And even for my directional daddies, there'll be a lot of times uh, uh, they'll speak on something and uh, put two plus two together and realize I had five instead of four. <laughs> and I got to make a switch. Sometimes it's okay. Sometimes, sometimes when we get light on something, let's be honest about it, sometimes we get light on something and it's on something that we have dealt with or done all of our lives that we learned from a young age, that was instilled in us from a child, whether it's a family tradition, whether it's a religious tradition, let's be honest, and then we get light in the Word, and all of a sudden it's not like you just kind of move over a little bit and change your direction by one degree, and now all of a sudden it's like, boom. Now, that goes contradictive to the way I've acted and behaved and thought. My perspective, my ideology in this area, all my life has been contrary to that word. Now, what are you going to do? Now you have light on it. And so what he's doing is in that moment, he's dealing with you. Yeah. And if you keep on that path after you've received light, see... Paul said, he said, God had mercy on me because the things that I did before I met him, I did because, out of ignorance. Because that's what darkness is. I ain't got time to teach on that. But light is knowledge and darkness is ignorance in Scripture. And once you have an understanding of that, there's going to be a lot of things when you go back and read it, it's going to start making some sense to you. And when you get light on something, now you're accountable. See, that's why he's a good king. He only holds you accountable for what light you have. And that's why he's the only one that you should be listening to. Come on now. The only one you should be listening to because he's the one that gives you light. People, that's why we're not to judge other people because no matter what you say or do or see them, they might look like they have it all together, but you don't know their heart. God looks at the heart. God knows what they know because he's the one that showed it to them. There's a lot of people that are walking around. They could quote scripture after scripture in an area of their, you know, in a certain area or topic, and you'd be like, wow, brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so, they got it together and that. And then you get to hanging around them, and you realize they might know the scripture, but they're all jacked up in that area. They ain't got a clue. <laughs> they ain't got a clue. Matter of fact, they're way below the <laughs> where they're supposed to be lying. But once again, don't judge that. No. Because we all got strengths and weaknesses. We all got areas that we cling to a little more. That's why the body needs the body. That's why every joint supplies. Because where you're weak in one area, you're going to need your brother and sister in that other area to help pull you up. Because that's their area of strength. That's why we got to help each other. That's why nobody but Je When Jesus was on the earth, it says that, that he had the anointing without measure. He was the body of Christ on the earth. Full of grace and truth complete and whole and now that he now that he is ascended and we got the holy ghost and now we're the we're still the body of christ on earth yeah. but we're in different places and parts <laughs> hallelujah and we all need each other and so we need our strengths and we need to help our brothers and sisters with their weaknesses mm -hmm. glory be to god so he's going to try to prune us he's going to shape us he's going to mold us he's going to correct us and, and instruct us so we will bear much fruit. Now then, 2 Timothy 3. Move it over to the left a little bit. Or scroll down, whichever one you got. <laughs> I got them both, amen. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verse 16, it says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine or teaching. It's profitable for reproof or instruction. It's profitable for correction, 
for instruction in righteousness. That reproof would be better translated probably rebuke. So it's, teach, so it's profitable for teaching, for rebuke, for correction, and instruction in righteousness. <laughs> that the man of God may be perfect or complete, mature. Yes. You don't bear fruit. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You don't bear fruit until you mature. Yes. You can't take something off the vine or off the limb that's just starting to bud and it's going to produce anything. You got to wait till the it's mature. Yeah. God, Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God will always pick the fruit of the vine when it's mature. Yeah. <laughs> if you plant it too soon, it won't bear fruit. If you wait too late, it stinketh. Yeah. It's just all rotten up. Yeah. He don't. He he's not into rotten, and he's not into too soon either. <laughs> just right. And so that's what he's trying to do with you. As he is trying to mature you up, he's trying to correct you, instruct you. He's trying to teach you that you can be mature, complete. Like it says in James chapter 1, thoroughly equipped. And so you will lack nothing. Ooh. Hallelujah. So we don't like the process, but we all want the promise. We want to be where we're at. We don't want to go through the go-through to get to where we need to go. We like the idea of it. We see the promise in Scripture. Like one man, God said, uh, he says, well, you can, because uh, all the promises of God in him are yes and an amen. And we all want the promise, but we don't really want to go through the process. And you can have everything that the Bible says you can have once you become the Christian the Bible says you're to be. Because you don't get what you want, you get what you can manage. <laughs> and he's not cruel about that. He yeah. don't want to put more on you than you can handle. Yeah. Plus, how about the other people in their lives? Huh? Hey, you guys probably know some uh, people that, uh, uh, employers that you sure wouldn't want to be under that. What about some, some, some preachers? Would you want to go to a church under a, under a pastor that didn't like people? Who wanted to pass you off from plate two times? Three. Because he wants to make sure that car payment gets his car payment gets paid. Yeah. Come on now, yeah. ain't never gonna visit nobody sick. Don't want to pray for you at all in, uh, or anything. But boy, he wants to be regarded when he or she steps up to the pulpit, don't they? Yeah. You better respect God's anointed. Well, I got some issues. Can you help pray for me? No, I got time. Would you want to be under that? No, I wouldn't either. And so there's a mature because it's where he's going to, because where much is given, see, we all want much, but what much is given, much is required. And so now as you go up, you got more responsibility because if you're, as you go up, there's still some that are under you. Mm -hmm. And so you're responsible to be able to handle that well. It's not just because eventually God will, will open doors for you and you've got a whole new outlook on life. It's, I can remember the first time I got promoted on a job and it's like, you want the desk job? Yeah, everybody wants the desk job. And then you get in there and you realize what that desk job takes. You're like, oh my. I didn't realize all this come with it. I just figured that since I've been here a while, I know kind of how things are going. I can just come in and say that and tell this and get going over there. And everything going to be just fine. And Lord, how mercy, the responsibility that comes with it. It's a whole different story. The, uh, the first church that we, that we pastored, that we were senior pastors, it's amazing how differently that you look at things when you realize that the buck stops with you. And everything rises and falls on leadership. If it's a complete yeah. failure, yeah. you better own it. Yeah. You didn't do it right. You let some things slip. Yeah, but they messed up. You put them there. Yes, you did. Are you going to take them out? You bet. Are they able? Do they just, in other words, uh, uh, um, uh, are they willing or are they able? Because if they ain't able, then you need to work with them. Yeah. But if they're not willing, they got to go. Yeah. There ain't nothing you can do about that. Some leadership tips I just thought was free. Yeah. See, that's things you learn along the way as you grow and as you mature. Amen. 
So let's recap some things. Number one, God's commandment is to be fruitful. Number two, you can't be fruitful until you're seedful. Number three, you can't be seedful until you get to your core. Number four, you can't get to your core until you're first peeled. And number five, here's number five. We're finally to number five, and it's going to flow really good into number five. Number five is you can't be peeled until you want to be. And that's where we're going to end it for today and where we're going to pick it up next week.